I'm going to present findings from a research that we did in Kenya and Somalia. And we did this research in the context of a protracted drought crisis. Between 2021 and 2023, Save the Children was implementing an anticipatory action project in Kenya and Somalia. And we were focusing on uh, pastoral areas where uh, Jamil Observatory is uh, implementing much of the research work. And as you recall, during that period, we had a protracted drought crisis in Kenya and Somalia and also other countries within the region. So here we were with an anticipatory action project in 2021. And typically we know when you want to implement a dispatory action, you do it before a crisis. But here we have a project to implement, yet the crisis is with us. And therefore, within the Jamil Observatory, we commissioned this research, it's qualitative research, to try and understand what we could do. Because when we started implementing, we started asking whether there's a role for anticipatory action in a protracted crisis like drought, simply because we realized that most of the families were experiencing high levels of food insecurity, but also they had lost significant portions of their livelihoods, including livestock. And we started asking, what can we do in a context of crisis where in relation to anticipatory action. So we had these uh, four areas of uh, inquiry where we were trying to understand how and when actors can support these families that are undergoing a crisis, and more importantly, a crisis that was forecasted to worsen. We know these areas experienced up to five failed rain seasons, meaning that at any given time, we will get information about the direction of the crisis. And therefore, we started asking, can we do something to understand what families were doing on their own without external support as part of their drought preparedness, but also managing the drought impacts? That is point number one. And point number two, we also try to talk to them to understand if they were to get additional resources, what can they do? What additional actions can they take? So today we'll focus on the first two bullet points, and then you can get the other from the main report. Now, look at this. We realize that families were taking an average of 3.7 actions. And of course, these were not taken simultaneously, meaning that you could have a family taking one or two at any given time. And some of the actions, the first three were the main ones, migrating livestock to where there's pasture near water systems. And this also involved tracking livestock. And again, you know, when it comes to tracking, it means families have to spend money. So again, the issue of can the poor afford livestock tracking in the context of drought, or whether we can come up with a project like an anticipatory project where we can bring them together and try to get them to move their livestock because like in Somalia, they move them hundreds of kilometers and therefore an issue of affordability. Fodder, again, we see they were purchasing fodder. In some cases, they were also selling animals to purchase fodder. So again, can you implement an action if you know that the situation is going to worsen in the coming season for them to access fodder and reduce this distress sale of livestock. Water, again, I'm moving closer to where the water systems were. Communities coming together to do water tracking, rationing the little water that they had access to, and also coming together to repair water systems. And then we have these three other actions which were more of secondary uh, interventions that they were taking. The first one is more for selling charcoal, both Somalia and Kenya. 
and we know the impact of this on the environment. We had a petty trade, especially in Kenya. Cash in Somalia, a lot of reliance on remittances. Education, we see in both countries, poorly children out of school for them to go and look after livestock or maybe moving with the livestock or when they split the family members to copy the drought, but also where affordability was becoming a challenge that they could not afford to keep children in school. Now we tried to ask them what were the most effective actions that they thought were working. And number one was buy commercial feed. And of course, we have to think about the markets and also the issue of affordability. Transporting water closer to where the livestock is, selling livestock, and also petty trade. And you realize that the last two relate to getting some immediate income that can support the families. If the crisis is worsening, meaning that if you can do cash transfer, then you are able to ensure that they have some money, some cash that they can use for their immediate needs. We also try to ask them, if you want to get additional resources, what else can you do? Additional actions. When you look at these, it's not quite different from what they want doing on their own. The first one is about livestock feed. If uh, the crisis is worsening and we have projections that it's going to worsen in the coming season, what can we do? For supplementary feeding. Water storage, linked to that is uh, water tracking. Similar to what they do on their own. Cash and food assistance, vet support in terms of uh, treatment and the vaccinations. Borehole rehabilitation, again related to water. In terms of our summary findings, we realized that, as I said, we had up to five consecutive failed seasons. But we realized that over this period, they were using the same, same strategies. There was no change in terms of our strategies after the first failed season and what they did when they got information that the fourth season is going to fail. Use of negative strategies, harmful for children. I talked about the school, but also issues around the food intake. There was desire to diversify incomes, but again, the options are quite limited because in the pastoral areas, we have thin markets that you can only do this much. External support was there, but the challenge is not uh, enough. Early warning messages from SODMA, NDMA, but again, challenges around access and accessing that in the right format, in a language that people understand, and the issue of trust. I talked about uh, the types of actions taken, water, livestock, income diversification, but they emphasize that we need this earlier. If we know the second season has failed, and the third is going to fail, what can we do to bring these interventions earlier and in a more systematic way. In terms of timing and dispatch action, it was very difficult through this research to pinpoint the exact time between 2021 and 2023 where we can say this is the right time to do a dispatch action. But from the research, there is consensus that you can do more. You have more opportunities for a dispatch action before the first or the second failed season. As you progress into the other seasons, the opportunities become less and less. Recommendations. Most promising are dispatchery actions from this research. One is a livestock feed, of course with these challenges in terms of markets, water access, cash transfers, food assistance for families, vet medicines and the vaccinations, school feeding, talked about uh, some of the negative mechanisms. But again, as we prioritize this, let's also think about what we can still sustain in terms of a risk reduction and the preparedness. In terms of early warning, improve on access, 
communication, how we communicate that, the trust of this information, the format that we present at the language. And lastly, in conclusion, from the research, we can say there's a role for anticipatory action in a protracted crisis. But we have to set realistic expectations. As I said, you can do a lot before the first failed season. You can still do some for the second, before the second failed season. But as we progress in a protracted crisis, the opportunities become less and less. So we have to set uh, reali realistic expectations. Thank you with the intention. What we did also the economic analysis in these uh, communities, we rea realized that uh, the greater population were, were actually in crisis. We realized that so many people were dropping out of pastoral livelihoods, that uh, they were dropping out of uh, livestock production or keeping. How do you target those? Can we say we just scale up the material response for those? There were those who had livestock, even uh, when the crisis was progressing. Can we target them for feed support and all that? Some beautiful anticipatory action work that can be supported from different uh, groups, and the rest can go to humanitarian work. And lastly, we have to think about systems that need strengthening, and in particular, uh, resilience building that we have kept talking about last week and uh, also this morning. Thank you.